nice Easter. It was good. Good. Okay, Steve, good morning. I see you're on mute. I just wanted to say good morning. Um, okay, so what we got today is um, we are going to go, it's a format we've done before, but just slightly different. Um, this sh should be fun. So usually in the past, we've gone um, from 10 reps down to one in three minutes. So we've done that format before. Today, we're going to go from one rep up to 10. And we're going to be kind of, we'll, we'll have a pair of exercises together. Um, so for example, with the goblet squats and deadlifts, we've got three minutes on the clock and you're going to get as much done as you can in the three minutes. So you would do one goblet squat and one deadlift, and then two goblet squats, two deadlifts, three, three, four, four, all the way up to 10. You may not get there. I'm not sure how the timing will work out. If there's one that we might get there on, it would likely be the first one and possibly possibly the toe taps and the rows. You won't get there with the side plank and the eccentric cam curl. But um, So you're just working for three minutes basically or until you get to 10 reps of each. The nice thing about each of these, there are quick transitions in between. Um, so we're basically just gonna be working for three minutes. We'll do the first pair of exercises, then the second, then the third, and then we'll go back to the top and go through it one more time. So to in total, we've got about 18 minutes of work um, with the rest, with the rest in between, it's, it's probably gonna be more like 23 to 24 minutes, okay? Um, so I've got the exercises there in the, the chat, although you should only have to remember two at a time because we're just bouncing back and forth between the two. As we're warming up, we do have, we're gonna try these eccentric hamstring curls today. So if you're wearing socks and you have like a um, laminate or a wood floor, that will work because basically what we're going to be doing is a glute bridge and then letting your heels slowly slide out. Um, so we're doing that hamstring curl, but, but kind of backwards. So if you have uh, carpet sliders or socks on a slip, somewhat slippery surface, that will work. Um, but what we want is just something that will slide, something that will slide. So keep that in mind as we're getting ready to go here. Uh, so maybe if you have furniture sliders at your house, that would be a nice thing to have. Um, I'm just going to use socks on the laminate floor here, okay? All right, so let's get rolling. Uh -huh. We're going to <laughs> we're going to start off on the foam roller. Let's start on the front of your shins today. So you'll be in that quadruped or all fours oh, position, yeah. rolling the outside of your shin back and forth on the roller. And switch sides. Good, let's just stay on the front of your legs. Move the roller above your knees. And we're going to roll the front of your thighs here. See if you can uh, get all the way up to your waistband or all the way up to the top of your hip there. Probably have to move the roller off to one side to do that. Move yourself back and forth. And while you're on that leg, we'll just fall over to the side and we'll roll the inside of that leg. So you're laying on the side, the roller will be parallel to you. Bring your knee up. Oh, I done. <clears throat> see here. And let's go ahead and switch, rolling the front of your other leg. So believe it or not, guys, this is uh, this is live morning workout number twenty-five. Um, so we're getting a pretty decent bank of these now. Who knows how many we'll have? Tough to say. I'm guessing we'll have, I don't know, 40, 45 of these. Plenty of opportunities to get your 15 in to get your t-shirt. Also plenty of opportunities to get 30 in for the uh, 
other special prize we got for the 30 time or 30 times people. All right, we should be rolling the inside of your thigh by now. And let's go ahead, have a seat on the roller. Okay, just rolling your cheeks out here. Remember, if you don't have a roller, that's okay. You can also use a uh, tennis ball or any kind of ball you got sitting around your house, or even just do it manually with, with your hand. All right, let's tilt over to one side. You're gonna roll kind of between your waistband or the crest of your hip and your hip bone that you know hurts when you fall on it. So that little four or five inch area right there in between the crest of your hip and your, your the bony part of your hip by your pocket. You're just gonna roll there. And then as you're rolling, we'll start to roll. You're gonna roll back and forth on the roller, but you're also turning your body working your way to your other side. And we'll end up on the other side. All right, good. So we're gonna use the roller here. You'll turn and sit on top of the roller. Uh, we're going to do kind of a squat stretch here. For some of you guys that can get down into a full squat, this may not be much of a stretch, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to get heels as close to the roller as possible. So it's like we're, you're sitting in a full squat, but I'm sitting on top of the roller. So it's just kind of a little bit of help down there in the bottom. We're going to take elbows and push knees out. So you can adjust your feet as you need to, but this should feel like a hip stretch, grind stretch. We're just kind of sitting into this deep squat, using your elbows to push your knees out. And just kind of rolling and feeling the stretch here. If you can do this without the roller, you can do that. You can do it without the roller. I have to work pretty hard to do that. So I want to, I'd rather relax into a stretch and really get more out of it. Okay, keeping your roller. Um, or if you don't have a roller, you can just lay on the floor, but we're going to lay down on the roller with your spine along the roller. Try to set yourself up so that your, both your waistband and your head can fit on the roller. So if you got a three foot roller, it should work out. If you're just lying on the floor, then you'll just lie on the floor with your knees bent and feet flat. Okay. So we're going to take a second here and just let your arms open up like you're gonna give the ceiling a hug. We're just looking for a chest stretch here. If you've been joining us for these workouts, uh, we've been doing quite a few push-ups lately, so we wanna make sure that we stay, stay strong in front there, but we also wanna be able to open up and stay loose. And so as we're doing this, we're gonna hold for about another 20 seconds. We can start to open up, kind of doing like a snow angel with your top, the top part of your arms or with your upper body, I guess. So we're just kind of rolling through a stretch like this, getting that nice stretch across your chest and through your shoulders. All right, last part of this, you're gonna reach up over your head. Make sure you're not arching your back too much here. You're gonna reach up over your head, feel that stretch. And then we're gonna bend the elbows and slide your elbows down towards your pockets. So into that W, so we go the letter Y, reaching up above your head, and the letter W by bending your elbows, bringing your elbows down into your back pockets. So let's reach up and down there, just sliding along. This should be a nice stretch for your shoulders. We're working on uh, stretching the rotator cuff here and keeping your chest nice and loose. Once you get 10 there, we will uh, go ahead and stand up. <laughs> so 
Okay, so from the standing um, position, we're just gonna start to reach and tap. So we're gonna reach out and tap the floor. And then with that same leg, you're gonna reach out and behind you and tap the floor. So we're doing a little bit of hip warm up here, just reaching out, moving the line a little bit more, reach out and tap, reach across and tap. Reaching out to tap, reaching across and tap. So let's do that 10 times each side. Should start to feel a little bit of a warm up in your hip here. You're gonna be doing a little bit of a lunge each time, but when you tap your foot, you shouldn't be uh, putting too much weight on it. So just enough to, to tap the floor, like you're checking to see if the ice is safe or not. We tap. Just 10 each side here. Should be on the other side by now. Really reach out, really reach across. Okay, good. So once you're done with 10, we're gonna get, bring your leg up, give it a hug. And then we're gonna take that leg straight back for a reverse lunge. Come back up, give that leg a hug. It's a good chance for you to work on your balance here. Step back. We're gonna do uh, eight of those. If you're just joining us, remember you, today you're going to need something to uh, that you can let your heels slide on, that your heels will slide on the floor. So maybe it's socks on a wood floor, or maybe you have a furniture slider that will work on the carpet. Socks might work on the carpet, assuming it's not shag. Steve? It's not shag. <laughs> <laughs> Just seem like that kind of guy. All right. Good, we'll go feet wide, hands to the floor here. So we're given kind of a groin stretch and a hamstring stretch. So we'll just sit into this stretch here. Let's hold for about 20 seconds. Make sure you're taking nice deep breaths. Try to expand your waistband. And exhale fully. All right, good. From here, you're going to press your whole left hand into the floor. So we're kind of growing roots with that left hand. Take your right hand. We're going to rotate up. Try to look at the ceiling. Stack your shoulders up on top of each other. Point your fingertips at the ceiling. Now we glue our right hand to the floor. We take our left up. And alternate those until we've done each one six times. So that's the second time up with the right hand. Second time with the left hand and work your way through. Make sure we're trying to get our shoulders stacked up on top of each other here. So it's not as important to have uh, your fingertips pointing at the ceiling, but we do want to get the shoulders stacked up on top of each other. And we'll get six each side there. From there, we're just gonna to go to that push-up position. All right, uh, nice and strong here. We're just gonna bring a foot up, get that stretch, and then we alternate. Okay, so we're not doing any of the extras here. Just bringing your foot up flat next to you. And we're alternating, hold, hold that stretch for about one or two seconds. And let's do eight each side there. If you jumped on late today, um, we're going to be doing six exercises, three different pairs. Within each pair, we've got three minutes to go from one, uh, one rep up to 10. So the first pair is going to be goblet squats and deadlifts. So we'll do one goblet squat, one deadlift, bring weight back up, two goblet squats, two deadlifts, 
and so on. If you reach 10, you rest. If you don't reach 10, not a big deal. Uh, these are kind of meant to have you not really be able to meet to get there. Although the first one you might, okay? Um, so we've got three minutes to do work. Uh, the first pair, like I said, are the goblet squats and the deadlifts. The second pair is where you may need the uh, sliding thing. So if you get done with the squats and the deadlifts, we're gonna take about a one minute break in between. Uh, go get your thing that is gonna slide along the floor for you, okay? Um, all right, so grab a weight that, uh, just keep in mind, you're gonna have this weight in your hands for three minutes here, or until you've uh, finished everything, okay? So goblet squats and deadlifts. So just a quick review here, goblet squats, keeping your feet flat on the floor, dropping your butt straight down towards the floor, keep your chest up, let your elbows drop right in between your knees, with nice even pressure over your feet. Then you'll just drop the weight down to do a deadlift, which is just a hip hinge. So we push your hips back, keeping your back nice and flat. If you don't want to change where the weight is, that's fine. You can do your goblet squats here, with the weight down, and then do your hinge. The difference between a squat and a deadlift is mostly about the knee bend. So in a squat, you're, there's lots of knee bend. In a deadlift, there's lots of hip bend, okay? All right, so we'll get going here. Three minutes, working your way from one of each to 10 of each, alternating back and forth. Ready? And here we go. Goes quick in the beginning. On that last deadlift, pop the weight up into the goblet squat. We are one minute in. Remember the other way you can challenge yourself with this is by adjusting the weight if you have that uh, opportunity at home. We're halfway there, minute and a half in out of the three minutes. One minute left. Making sure on those deadlifts that you're feeling that in your hips, your butt, the back of your legs, not in your low back. 15 seconds left. I said 15, I meant 45. <laughs> 25 seconds left, sorry. You need to bring that timer home for the chat. Seriously. Just not doing anything there. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, and one. That's three minutes. That get you just there. Huh? Did that just work out for you? No, I, I didn't finish nine. Okay. You guys thought in the beginning that you'd be there in no time. <laughs> uh, okay. So I've got uh, just the slide board sliders here. So as we're resting, 
we'll go through the next pair. All right, so you won't put them on because you're going to have to, you're going to be kind of moving around, but we're going to do an eccentric hamstring curl. So we're here, you're going to do a glute bridge. So pushing hips up, make sure your belly stays strong here. And then we slowly let your heels out. Make sure at the end, your butt is going to touch the ground. You shouldn't be arched to the point where your butt is hovering off the ground. So we're here, drive up. Okay. From there, you're going to roll right over into a side plank. Hold for a second, side plank. And then you're back to the floor for your hamstring curls. One, push up. Two, if you can do the hamstring curl, you can do the hamstring curl, but I figured most people wouldn't be able to in terms of like their equipment and if the things slide well enough. But if your stuff slides well enough, like if you have carpet sliders on carpet, you can do the, the hamstring curl, okay? But otherwise you're just pushing up, let it out, reset, push it up, let it out. So you should be doing the work with the back of your legs, okay? All right. So we're ready with uh, the next three minutes here. Ready? And here we go, working our way from one up to 10. You can go either bent uh, on your elbow, the side plank's gonna be either on your elbow or on your hand, but we're just gonna roll from one side to the other. So try to stay up that whole time. Once you get to your side, you're just going to hold that side plank for about a minute, or sorry, about a two second hold. We are halfway there, a minute and a half in. If you're watching this live or sometime during the day, today we are doing a Jeopardy night um, or, or quiz trivia night, Friday at nine o'clock. So hopefully you can join us for that. I would brush up on uh, Colleges and universities, 80s fit, or, uh, fitness history, 90s movies, uh, 90s sports teams. Sorry, it's 80s movies. Fifth grade science is another one of the topics. Thirty seconds left to go here. So try to go push up position. Roll the other way. What time here? Yeah, go push up position, then open up again. Push up position. Open up again. Okay. So it's just like that alternating side plank. Right, there you go. When you're switching side to side in the side plank, you should kind of pass go through the either plank or push up position in the middle. And that's our time, good. Okay, so while we're resting, the next ones you'll need a weight. You'll need a weight for, we've got toe taps, just to get the heart rate back up. So toe tap, the weight sitting in front of you, you're gonna have your toe sitting on top. So one, one, and then from there, we go down and get it. One upright row, 
Weight goes back down, tap, 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 tap. That's two, two upright rows. Okay, so for an upright row, you're thinking about keeping your elbows above your hands. So you shouldn't end up here. You're gonna pull up, your elbow should end right about your ear height. And the, uh, your hands should be just a little bit lower than your elbows, okay? All right, we're gonna get going here. Three, two, one, here we go. Row works best if you have an overhand grip. So if you find a, you can find a way to get your palms facing your chest as you do it. That's best. Uh, sometimes if you have like a, if you have a dumbbell or something, it's hard to get two hands on it. So we got to kind of make do there. Make sure you're cautious when you're picking the weight up. It should look like a, like a deadlift or a squat. Somewhere in between there, it should be nice and strong through the middle. All right, we're a minute and a half in, minute and a half left. Remember, if you finish, you might finish this one. If you finish, uh, you got some extra rest time. We're given three minutes to finish up here. Yeah, we're going back down. Last minute. Fifteen seconds left. Ten. And good. Okay, that's our time. So you may have finished that one or gotten closer anyway. That's kind of a quick one back and forth. Who shows up as I'm gonna unmute you here. Who shows up as Samsung? Rhonda. Oh, hey, Rhonda. How are you? Good. I'm taking attendance. <laughs> All right. Don, I see you. David, Jennifer. Steve, Ted. Carol, I see you, and that's it. Good job, guys, great Monday morning. Okay, so here's the deal. We have gone for 31 minutes. It's uh, been 31 minutes since we started. Part of that was warm up. So the plan is to go through another round here. If you choose to jump off the train right now, we've already got our attendance, you're good to go. We're gonna do one more here. We'd love for you to join us. Um, this would be the second round. About nine minutes left of work here and a bunch of rolling around on the floor. Okay, all right, so let's get right back into it here. Three minutes, we're gonna do 
maybe 30 seconds rest in between each just to transition. So watch out for that stuff. Um, but we'll get started here. Same one and up or go down? Yes, one and up. Yep, so we're back up to the beginning. Goblet squats and deadlifts. Yeah. Goblet squats and deadlifts. From one, working our way up to 10. Okay, so about nine minutes of work left here. Ready? And off we go. Deadlifts and squats. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing. I could have got carried away. Remember, as you start to get tired, make sure your chest stays up with those goblet squats, heels pushing down through the floor. The more you can keep the weight on your midline, meaning not too far forward, the better off this is going to be for your legs, butt and back. Sometimes the toughest part of our, this is just having to hold the weight the whole time. It is easier if you hold the weight down the whole time. So if you're looking for a way to make a little mini adjustment, that's one way to do it. Just past the halfway point, we've got a minute and 20 left. Remember, you're either working to 10 reps or the three minute mark. This one will be pretty close. Forty five seconds left. Twenty seconds left. Ten left. Three, two, one. Good job. Okay, working our way into the side plank and hamstring curl. So again, if you can do the hamstring curl on the floor that you have, or with the equipment that you have, go for it. If we're just getting away with the eccentric where you're sliding out, that's good too. What we're looking for is a little bit of work with that kind of hamstring curl motion, okay? So, working for three minutes here, alternating between the side plank. Oh, on the side plank, make sure if I'm on this side, I'm going to point my chest at the ground. So if I'm going straight arms, which is easier to transition for sure. So if I'm side plank on this side, I'm going to point my chest at the ground, go to that push up position, and then just roll to the other side to do the transition. Okay. All right. Three minutes ready and go.
One minute in, two minutes to go. One minute left, everybody. Remember on the side plank, you can also go from your knees to make it a little bit easier side plank if you have uh, shoulder issues or anything keeping you from doing the full side plank. Forty seconds left. Ten seconds. Okay, last three minutes of work coming up. We've got a combination of toe taps plus the upright row. Uh, make sure with the upright row, again, that your elbows stay above your hands and hopefully you're able to hold the weight so that your hands face you versus having to hold the side or some other way, right? So it works best if you can hold the weight with your hands facing you. Um, if you have two weights, that would also work, right? So you can hold the weight just like that. Just happens to work out better for us uh, using the kettlebells or using the, the one weight, okay? All right, so toe taps coming up. Whoa. Okay, toe taps and upright row. Ready and go, here we go, three minutes left. When you go to pick up that weight, it should be in between your shoelaces. Okay, like I said, just like a deadlift, just because it's not called a deadlift doesn't mean you shouldn't pick it up with good form. One minute in. That's it. Three seconds. Yeah. Minute and 20 to go, just past the halfway point.
45 seconds left. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and done. All right. Yeah. Great job, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Kelly, good job. Sippets, Kelly Sippets. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, have an awesome day. Looks like it might be kind of crappy weather today, but hopefully you got off to a good start. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. Bye. Bye-bye.